Kelly came up with the name Mobility Wad, I think in 2008 or 2009. And at that time we were like, God dang, we are creative and clever, aren't we? Like we were the first people to take a word and connect it to Wad and make it a brand. So what, one of the things that we were really excited about was trying to drop this old language of flexibility. Stretching. Range of motion, stretching, the non-specific. And we wanted to take, sort of redefine the category as a systems, whole systems approach, having you be able to move through the environment. That's what being mobile is. The body is so tolerant and so wonderful. And one of the foundational mistakes people make is that we can't think in terms of decades. There's no way I was like, what will my hip function be like so that I can go for a hike when I'm 50? Like that was not even in my, my scope of care. But all of a sudden we're seeing that if we can get these base behaviors in and start them early and then they just become habits and they're just it's easy it's easy to do this stuff it's like compounding interest in the bank and that by the time you are 30 40 50 60 you can't actually reclaim the total potential we use the term constrained environment but whatever whatever it is is about making sure we don't have the things we don't want to do around us because don't look where we don't want to go yeah like we're like any human like we like cookies and if they're sitting right there in front of us we're going to eat them like we you know no no one should think for two seconds that we're like masters of self-control we're not because we don't believe in self-control in our tv area for example you know we're fans of sitting on the floor um so we have these little mats that you can use to sit on the floor all around our tv area there's like a plethora of mobility tools and balls and rollers and there's not a single sitting desk at our office it's not an option because you know if you need to sit you can take a break and sit on a stool that's totally fine but at least the default sets you up to be able to stand for most of the day if that's what you choose there's just these little ways that we constrain environments you know we make sure we have vegetables and fruits in the house but we don't just buy them and then throw them away we make sure that they're set up because again we're creatures of habit we don't want to have to think all the time and make choices and so those things are just set up for us they're like the standard desk example, we're going to do it. So much of what we're trying to do is ask ourselves, do I need a vitamin for that? Or could I eat something for that? Do I need another skilled intervention or can I go play Frisbee or ride my bike? I think sometimes, again, we sort of like lost our minds thinking we need, you know, all, all of this technological help and support and supplemental support, help and support when it's like, you know, hey, you could just eat a vegetable and ride your bike a little bit. And, and yeah. on top of that, those things would fill you up emotionally and psychologically. A year and a half or two years ago, we moved to rural countryside Colombia, a little town called Barichara, and we don't have a car. I now walk to get my groceries like 30 minutes every day. I'm automatically getting sun, nature, friends time. Walking. You work on like decongesting and calming Walking. down after your recovery. Oh, but no, I you're trying to get home. Yeah, exactly. I don't have to add a new formal practice to my already eight hour long movement and mobility practice. It's just unstructured, free nature, play, friend time. And it's way more sustainable and motivating um, than it used to be for me where I was always trying to add, okay, and I need another routine and another routine and another routine. I remember I was at some kind of like health and fitness conference years ago. And I remember someone put up this chart, which has always stuck with me. And it was sort of like what health habits have the most impact on longevity and durability far and away above all the other practices that we think about in our industry, like sleep and exercise and nutrition was having a strong community and friends around you and, and family and like close family. Family, like a tight family connection. So we aren't really meditators, but I mean, I exercise regularly. And for me, that is, and always has been a big part of my sort of mental health. One of the things that I think people forget when we're talking about that psycho-emotional health is you have to take care of the body in order to create a, a readiness for that thing. Protect everyone's sleep. I remember um, I was at a Perform Better Summit, a one-liner, which always stuck with me. He said, sleep is the closest thing that we have to a magic pill. We're all looking for the magic pill for everything. We found it, it's sleep. <laughs> Just sleep more and that helps pretty Amen. much everything. Yeah. Taking care of our health has become this negative for so many people because it's all about what I can't eat and what I should have been doing that I didn't do and I should have done that. And I think some of it is just about this, like being, you know, kind to oneself and saying, hey, I, I'm not going to be perfect. We're going to have days where we eat too much and eat the wrong things and don't get enough sleep. And I think it's all just about like kind of being kind to yourself. And I think part of it is just about accepting that that's how a long cadence of health is going to look like is acceptance that you know no one's going to be perfect and you don't have to be actually